everybody. In this video we are going to continue doing calculus with parametric curves. Specifically we will find the enclosed area. So as a reminder we went over this in previous videos. For parametric for, um, equations you can find your first derivative, derivative of y with respect to x, using this formula where you just take the derivative of y with respect to t and divide it by the derivative of x with respect to t. And then here is our formula for second derivatives. So let's get right into it. We are going to find the area enclosed by the curve x equals cosine cubed of t, y equals sine cubed of t, and this is for t values from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so here is what this curve actually looks like. It's pretty interesting. Um, it is called an asteroid, which is a hypocycloid with four cusps. So a hypocycloid is just a type of shape um, like this is an example, and it has to do with how the, the shape is traced out. Um, not to be confused with an asteroid. So at, this is called an asteroid. It's a geometric term, um, but it's not an asteroid. So just a quick mention of that. Now what I want you to notice is that this shape has a lot of symmetry. And so what we can do to find the area is take one quadrant for the shape and just times it by four. And so from calculus one, we can use our ideas that we know about area under a curve. So this curve is y, and it's um, the area under the curve and above the x-axis. And this is for values of x, notice the integral with respect to x, as x goes from 0 to 1. Okay, so what we have to do is use substitution to input our parametric equations. So first, we already know what y is in terms of t, and then we have to figure out what dx is in terms of t. And so if we start differentiating dx with respect to t, just using your power rule and your chain rule here, we have that the derivative of x, if we multiply over here by the dt, is 3 cosine squared t times sine t. Because we are finding area, we can go ahead and take this absolute value um, for dx. We don't want a negative area. All right, so now what about t? What do our t values go between? if we only want this part of the curve. So some of the times you can intuitively figure out what this is going to be, um, but I'm going to show you how to solve for it so, so you can just figure out in general how this method works. So basically you want to figure out well, what are x and y at this point where I'm ending now. Instead of going all the way around and forming this entire shape, we're stopping right here. So if x is 0 and y is 1, we just plug those into our equations that we know. And so you just solve for t. So in this case, I'm just showing you the work because in the future, if the problems get harder, you can do it like this. So we just solve for t, so cube root of um, both sides of this equation. And then we have cosine inverse and sine inverse to be able to find t. You don't necessarily have to use both equations to find t. You could have found t from just one of them, x or y. But I did want to show you that you would get um, the same answer either way. And so our integral here, we're changing it. We substituted for y, we substituted for dx, and then notice our limits of integration changed to be in terms of t, because this integral is now in terms of t. Okay, and so if I just factor out this 3, we have sine to the fourth power of t times cosine squared t dt. So that's the setup. The rest of this is going to be a lot of um, algebra and integration. Okay, so let's take a look. And trig. So first of all, recall what you know about some trig formulas, some identities. So we know that sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine 2t over 2, and very similarly cosine squared, um, same formula but with a plus sign. And so we're going to substitute into our integrand using these two formulas. Notice we had sine to the fourth, and this formula was for sine squared. So we just square this quantity to have it equal what we started with. Okay, so we're going to pick up from here and just start um, simplifying and then eventually integrating. All right, so first let's expand this out. So after just sort of factoring out the denominator and then foiling a little bit, we end up with this as our integrand. So some of the terms that are going to be a little bit of work are the cosine squared and then the cosine cubed terms. So let's break this down. 
So the cosine squared, we're going to use one of our identities from trig. We can rewrite this using our double angle formula. And for the cosine cubed, we're actually going to break this apart as cosine times cosine squared. And then we use the Pythagorean identity for that one. So then our integrand, we replace the cosine squared term. And then we separate the cosine cubed. And then from here, I'm just going to take this term in the back, this last term of my integrand, and I'm going to focus on that. So I'm going to use um, my Pythagorean identity and replace the cosine squared 2t with 1 minus sine squared 2t. And what this is going to let me do is let me use u substitution if I let u equal sine of 2t, because then the derivative is present. So then derivative is cosine 2t times 2. If we um, simplify, we get that 1 half du can replace our cosine 2t dt. So let's just focus on this integrand right here, or this integral right here. And so we can rewrite it. We have that our integrand is 1 minus u squared times that 1 half du. I'm going to go ahead and leave my limits of integration in terms of t, and then I'll just resubstitute before I uh, finish evaluating. So then factor out the 1 half and then integrate with respect to u, and then we'll replace the fact that u was sine of 2t. Okay, so let's put this together with what was our first few terms, which we separated into its own integral here. So our first integral, and then our second one, simplifies like this once we uh, integrate the first one. So just real quick, integral of 1 is t. Right here, just use a little bit of u sub, and you get that this inner the integral of negative cosine 2t is negative 1 half sine 2t. And then I just separated this fraction here, so the minus 1 half, when we integrate, we got minus 1 half t. And then over here, also using u sub, you had the minus 1 half that you can pull out to the front here. And then if you let u equal 4t, then you get 1 fourth sine 4t. And then plus what we separated into the second integral. And then we're going to evaluate all of this at pi over 2 and 0. And so plugging in pi over 2 into all of our terms, and then minus having plugged in 0 into all of our terms. So this whole second quantity here, all of this becomes 0. Uh, I'm missing a minus sign here, but all of this is 0. And then up here, a lot of terms go to 0 as well. So we keep the pi over 2, sine of pi is 0. We're going to keep this minus pi over 4 sine of 2 pi is 0, sine of pi is 0, and then sine of pi over here is also 0. So we end up with 3 halves times pi over 2 minus pi over 4 for a final answer of 3 pi over 8.